uh, we also need to be able to identify and also know the amount of uh, metals that we have in, in solutions. Uh, heavy metals are bad for your health, so we like to detect them in drinking water. Uh, for uh, What we do is we use uh, ICP inductively coupled plasma and it follows by mass spectrometer, which you have seen it before, or optical emission spectroscopy. Now the good thing is we don't need to get into details, but optical emission spectroscopy simply is transition of electrons when they fall down and they emit a light of specific color mass spectrometer you still need to remember the five stages so what we do is we ionize our, our sample using argon gas plasma uh, one definition that you really need to add to your vocabulary is what is a plasma so we have solid liquid gas in addition we have plasma uh, it it will have uh, free electrons, positive ions, neutral atoms or molecules. It can conduct electricity and it can be influenced by magnetic field. Uh, the examples that you should know from daily life is lightning or electric spark. Those are examples of plasma. Now, the good thing is you really don't need to know the details of how uh, the technology works, but you have your sample, you dissolve it in a solvent if it's not liquid, then you put it through a nebulizer, which produces a mist of the sample in addition to argon, and it goes through a, a plasma at uh, elevated temperature, and then it goes through a process of atomization, ionization, and it goes through a detector. Now this follows a mass spectrometer or optical emission spectroscopy, so, and or optical emission spectroscopy. Now what it produces uh, is the following. Uh, it gives you, um, based on emission, it gives you a wavelength of the element that we are dealing with. For example, I have put a picture of cadmium and its wavelength comes to life and then we can uh, say your sample has cadmium. Now in order to detect how much cadmium we have, we have to produce a calibration curve. So what the technician does is going to make a standard solution of cadmium of known concentration. In this case, our standard is at 0 0.02 milligram per decimeter cube of solvent. So this is your standard up here. Then what he she needs to do is do a successive dilutions. So we need to have uh, concentrations that are lower to have sort of a calibration uh, line going. So this, these are the knowns and then uh, the good thing, one advantage of this is you always get a linear calibration in contrast to many other uh, techniques that we use. Uh, so you produce your calibration curve then you inject the sample through and it will give you an intensity. Now the, if we imagine this is intensity of your, your sample then we take it to our calibration curve and then we are just going to come down vertically and read the concentration and that is the concentration of your sample. So somewhere here this is how much um, how concentrated our sample is. Now there are some limitations to use of ICP and, o, um, and optical emission spectroscopy. One is the quantity of the sample. For example for cadmium we know of, we only can go down to one microgram per decimeter cube. Uh, so if you have a smaller than one microgram, the technology is still not there and we cannot detect how much cadmium we have in your sample. The other one is accuracy of calibration curve. So th there is plus and minus, there are error bars and you have to do some analysis as how linear this, this line is. The, the last limitation, which is sort of uh, obvious, is you cannot detect argon and CO2, which is usually mixed with argon, and elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, because of solvent that we use, is uh, either H2O or something of organic nature. But it is great to detect the amount of uh, trace amount of metals that we have in samples, especially drinking water. 
So this is what we use ICP and then we follow it with mass spectrometer and or uh, optical emission spectroscopy.